How should LeBron feel about the Lakers offseason? He should be devastated. They having the worst offseason. They can't win the title. The Lakers just hired Darvin Ham. Lakers fans, here's what you got to look forward to this year. LeBron James passing Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in the all-time point tracker. That's the list. That's it? 2022 Los Angeles Lakers were one of the biggest disappointments the NBA has ever seen. By trading for former league MVP Russell Westbrook and signing a handful of aging veterans like Carmelo Anthony, Dwight Howard, and Trevor Ariza, the Lakers hope to capture their 18th NBA championship. This would not be the case though, as injuries, incompetent coaching, and a lack of athleticism quickly derailed their season. While the front office added some youth and energy to the roster with midseason signings of Stanley Johnson and Lennon Gabriel, it simply was not enough to move the needle, and the Lakers finished with a mere 33 and 49 record, good for 11th in the Western Conference. This experiment was an utter failure, and with the team having no first round draft pick and no salary cap space, their ability to improve this roster was extremely limited. On April 11th, the Lakers fired head coach Frank Vogel following their final game of the season. Seven weeks later, on June 3rd, former Bucks assistant Darvin Ham was hired to be the next coach with the goal of bringing the team back into title contention. The main issues with the Lakers in 2022 were that they had no spacing, they couldn't stay in front of anybody on defense, and they had no team identity. They were a veteran roster, and their style of play consisted of just letting their stars go to work. The Lakers weren't a team, just a group of individuals sharing a basketball court. That's a pretty tall order for one man to fix. It all starts on the defensive end of the floor for him. He promotes defensive effort and intensity as his goal is to turn defense into offense and get out on the break in order to play against an unset opposing defense. Outside of the break, Ham runs a four out, one in offense that prioritizes spacing the floor and moving the ball around. As an assistant on the Bucks, we saw Ham run this system while filling in for head coach Mike Budenholzer during the 2022 season. This features two players out on the wings, two players in the corner, and one player somewhere along the baseline in the dunker spot. The key to this is opening up the middle of the court from the restricted area to the top of the key and let his players get moving downhill towards the basket. While Ham has not been a full-time head coach in his career, he brings a level of leadership and respectability far superior to what Vogel had last season with the Lakers. A new head coach won't solve all the Lakers' problems, though. They needed to gut this roster, but with only the mid-level exception, veteran minimum contracts, and trades at their disposal, many members of the media wrote off the Lakers before free agency even started. What could Rob Plinka and the Lakers' front office possibly go out and do that could improve this team from last year? Well, compared to last year, pretty much anything can be considered an upgrade, and the Lakers have quietly had one of the best off-seasons in the league this year. With the acquisition of Lonnie Walker, Thomas Bryant, Damian Jones, Troy Brown Jr., and Juan Toscano Anderson, the Lakers have prioritized getting younger, getting high energy players with untapped potential. By no means are these the splashiest signings, but they're all good value, low risk, high reward players who know their roles and will be hungry to compete and prove themselves. Keep in mind, at the time of recording this, of the seven Lakers who became free agents this offseason, only one of them is now signed to an NBA roster. The motivation and team first mindset that these new signings bring in with them is what the Lakers had lost since their 2020 championship run. With Lonnie Walker and Troy Brown Jr., the Lakers are getting a pair of wings who have shown the ability to shoot, play, make, and defend on the perimeter. Walker's coming off a tough shooting year in which he shot 31% from three compared to 37% over his first three seasons in the league. However, after the All-Star break, Lonnie seemed to find himself again as he shot 37% from three-point range to close out the year. In doing so, Walker racked up more 20-point games during this 16-game stretch than he did in his first 54 games of the season. Walker has the potential to be what Malik Monk was to the Lakers last season, while also having a higher upside on defense. Similarly, Troy Brown Jr. gives the Lakers another 3 and D wing standing at 6'6". Last season, he shot a career-best 35% from three-point, but he isn't much of a volume shooter. In 2020, Brown had the best season of his young career as a member of the Washington Wizards, but this came with Brown filling more of a playmaking role. Still, he is an above average defender and is only 22 years old, so he has a lot of room to develop. The biggest positives in these signings is their mentalities. These guys have already shown their team first mindset. When asked about his fit with the team, Brown mentioned being able to provide length on defense, doing the dirty work, and taking pressure off his teammates. Similarly, the third wing the Lakers added, Juan Toscano Anderson, can be an effective defensive stopper for this team with his size and athleticism. But the best of these signings are the returns of Damian Jones and Thomas Bryant to the Lakers, which will allow Anthony Davis to move back to the power forward position where he is more comfortable. In Ham's system, the pairing of Bryant and Davis will give the Lakers the ability to space the floor on offense. Prior to his ACL injury, Bryant was a knockdown three-point shooter from the corners with the ability to also rack up double-doubles. It's unknown which version of Bryant we'll see next season, but if he can return to the 2020 version of himself, then the Lakers have a real diamond in the rough here. 
In the minutes that Bryant is off the floor, Damian Jones will be able to lock down the paint on the defensive end, giving him great flexibility as a coach. On offense, Jones is a lob threat and a smart player with a high field goal percentage, but he's also expressed his comfort shooting three-pointers. This combo of Bryant and Jones can potentially mirror what Ham had on the Bucks with Brooke Lopez and Bobby Portis. Overall, the Lakers are trying to play a more organized and optimized style of basketball in order to get the most out of LeBron James and Anthony Davis. And the front office has put the pieces around them to not only fit their play styles best, but to make the transition from the Bucks to the Lakers as simple as possible for Coach Ham. There's still that one elephant in the room. Russell Westbrook. Will Westbrook be on the team next year? The Lakers still need more shooting and have stated that they have plans to acquire this via trade, which would most likely mean that Westbrook and possibly Taylor Horton Tucker get shipped elsewhere. But will Russ get sent to Brooklyn in a trade for Kyrie Irving, or will the Lakers instead pivot to a trade for guys like Buddy Heald, Miles Turner, or Eric Gordon? The answer is still unknown at this point, and with the entire free agent market on pause until Kevin Durant's trade request gets solved, we probably won't know for some time. But what we do know, however, is the Lakers have to figure out something with Russ. After 14 years, Russell Westbrook recently decided to part ways with his agent Thad Foucher, stating there were irreconcilable differences between the two. According to Woj, this centered around Westbrook's future with the team, as his agent thought Westbrook should stay with the Lakers for the last year of his contract and buy into what Darvin Ham had planned out for him. While it's not directly reported what Russ thought, it can be inferred that he clearly wanted out of Los Angeles or he wouldn't have fired his agent. For the Lakers, this means whatever leverage they had in trade talks surrounding Russ is probably gone. But with that being said, this makes it more likely that a trade will occur soon. The Lakers are still missing a proven knockdown shooter, and is currently constructed, they'll probably finish the season somewhere between the 5th and the 8th seed at best. For the Lakers to have a chance at making any kind of playoff run, let alone win an NBA championship, it all comes down to the health of LeBron James and Anthony Davis. We know what these two can do when healthy, and that's win an NBA championship. When healthy last season, LeBron James looked fantastic as he came close to winning the scoring title, but fell just a little bit short. On the other hand, Anthony Davis never really looked like the Anthony Davis that we'd come to know. Whether it was due to injury or lack of motivation, Davis just had a down year. Many people were extremely concerned that he would continue to falling off going into next season when he stated that he hadn't shot a basketball in around two months. However, the next day he was seen working out with NBA shooting coach lethal shooter Chris Matthews. Since then, Rob Plink had stated the 80s having one of the best off seasons of his career. If that's the case, then maybe the two months away from basketball were actually good for him and allowed 80 to get some much needed rest and he'll be able to come into next season looking like the top five player that we're familiar with. Overall, Anthony Davis is poised for a bounce back year next year, and with the hiring of Darvin Ham, the signings of Juan Toscano Anderson, Troy Brown Jr., Lonnie Walker, Damian Jones, Thomas Bryant, and the potential revitalization or trade of Russell Westbrook, the Lakers are poised for redemption next season.